The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And we are in the middle, basically the end of June. And we are right around the corner from the NBA draft. It just kind of snuck up on us. We talked about it <laughs> before we started. And we kept thinking that it was like a ways away, a ways away. And now we're here. The NBA draft is upon us. I think part of it, I don't know about you, but I'm just not very excited about this draft. I think it's just th- that disappointment is still looming um, from the lottery. But I don't know. How do you feel about it? Are, are you excited about this draft class? Or It would be uh, fun to be in on even the top three, which Pistons fans wanted Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, or the chance to get Victor. So th- there is a slight hint of sadness <laughs> along with that. But – I'm always excited for the draft. Like I'm one of those people where <clears throat> whether it's like a bunch of nonstop potential hall of fame prospects or just a bunch of guys that I'm personally into, mm-hmm. I'm always interested in the draft, what certain teams need, like how, how, how certain players fall, what guys rise. Like I'm, I'm always interested in that, in that type of stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious too. Cause there's some, some interesting names kind of in the middle of the draft. Uh, we got your Michigan guys, um, and then towards like the back end of the draft is kind of wild because there are legit college studs in Drew Timmy and Oscar Shibwe that may or may not be drafted. I don't know where I don't know if Oscar Shibwe gets drafted. I'll go that far. Right, well, he's the type I'm... of player that I don't know. Like, is he just Bismack Biombo? I he's more like a like a souped up Jason Maxiel. Jason Maxiel was more athletic. Yeah, Jason Maxiel had a bounce, but like being that guy of just like he, he's going more of an instinctual it. rebounder. Right. That's the thing that'll probably keep him in the league. Yeah, but I don't know what else. Keeps and even him. though he's six nine, he has like a what seven two wingspan or something crazy. Honestly, I'm not even sure. He has like a seven foot wingspan okay. at least. Um, something like that is what I was reading. Um, and then Drew Timmy's kind of like I hate to say it, he's he's another like Luca Garza type guy. That I think he could be more Frank Kaminsky. Maybe Frank has played like. Seven years. Yeah. I think it's possible Drew, Drew Timmy could play that long. Maybe. Luka Garza was so slow, it, yeah. ju- it just wasn't going to work. Right. Um, so we have a lot of NBA talk today, um, but we do have one little NFL tidbit. The Lions. Made, big news. Big made, news made for a the slight, Detroit Lions. Made a slight uniform change. We had been kind of rumored for a while about doing something, and they teased a new helmet. Uh, with the back of a Ford Mustang that was blue yeah. and Lions colors. Wasn't in it. that like their alternate logo from like way back in the day? Uh, it was just the stripes. So yeah. the stripe of the Mustang was blue and gray, uh, similar to the old, old, old logo. that they, they wear the patch um, on the side of their jersey. And then the, the license plate said alternate helmet or something like that. Um, so it got revealed today, and it is that logo. The two stripes with the old school looking Lion. What are your thoughts? Listen, I as a fan of alternate, as a fan of good alternates, mm-hmm. I have always, I like throwbacks that go like far back into history. Mm-hmm. Most of them, besides like the Steelers prison uniforms, which were just like yellow and black stripes up and down, I hated those. Those yeah. were horrible. But most throwback uniforms, I really like, and I've I've always personally liked the old school Lions okay. logo. So I I like it. It it might be kind of weird with like the updated uniforms and that helmet, but mm-hmm. I don't mind the I don't mind the logo. I like that. I personally I'm not a fan. <laughs> I also enjoy throwback logos. I like you know bringing back old stuff. I mean I'm wearing 
wearing the Pistons horse today, uh, mostly for the draft. But anyway, um, this I guess part of it is the Lions, the Lions don't have like too many like different logos. They have like iterations of what they have now that they just kind of slightly sh- change the shading or an outline or something like that. So they have to go all the way back for this one. Um, but to me, it's just, I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. I much would have rather had all the, you know, do like a black helmet or, you know, the white out ones that people were playing or showing off. So that's just personal preference. I think it'll look okay in game. I think it'll be fine. Um, but I don't know. I kind of want like a whole alternate uniform, I guess. I want something, I want something more. A part of me thought it would be a black helmet mm-hmm. in like a all black uniform, but yeah, I think it any, kept it simple. Anything like that would have been cool, um, but alas, we did not. I vote '90s throwbacks for yeah. next season. That'd be the Barry Sanders era uniforms. Yeah, more of the uh, more matte colors. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Lions getting a little a little helmet upgrade, but back to the NBA. Let's start with. Probably the biggest news. Bradley Beal got traded. Uh, we were talking about it last week. Um, I don't remember if we had the... If the Suns were already in the final running at that point. I don't, I don't remember, to be honest. Um, but Bradley Beal has been traded to the Suns. And he was traded for CP3, Landry Shamit, and I believe two second rounders. Now, this deal hasn't fully gotten done just yet because uh, the Wizards and the Suns are looking for a third team to take on CP3. Uh, It sounds like it's going to be one of the L.A. teams. And at first, a lot of people thought, oh, it'll be the Lakers. They needed a point guard. But the rumor has it that it might be a reunited time with the Clippers, uh, which will be interesting. Um but what do, what do you think this does for the Suns? Does it make them better? Does it, like, is this a des- desperation move? Like, there, there's a lot of question marks for this move. I feel like this is definitely a desperation move. And I feel like they have at least two or three more moves to make for to, to make this a good team. Because you just added another shot creator who wasn't really a superstar-level player in Washington. He led the league in scoring one time, but mm-hmm. uh, he, he wasn't a superstar level player. And you still don't have a bench, really. And you still don't have defense. Mm-hmm. And you traded away your best shooter, probably, in Landry Shamit. They got to get to work. But don't you think they have to? Brad Beal is a better shooter than Shamit. I know technically it's like a depth. He piece. he is there. He's a better shooter off the dribble. He's he's a he's more of a scorer and a guy that shoots off the dribble. He, early in his career, he was more of a catch and shoot guy. But just Bradley Beal, yeah, like that. That's not going to do it. Mm-hmm. You need like at least two or three more shooters that can be trusted. Yeah, and you need some defenders. You need probably to trade DeAndre Ayton next, mm-hmm. because if you don't trade him, I don't know what the options are. First of all. His chemistry with the team seems like it's pretty much done. He gives up on plays more than any big man in the NBA. Yeah. If you keep him, I, I, I just don't know what this team is. Like, I don't see them being – maybe in the regular season might make them a top five seed, but they they have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Because this alone just doesn't do it. Mm-hmm. See, to me, I think the trade is – like pretty solid to get a player of Beal's caliber for, you know, an aging CP three, as much as I love CP three Landry Shamit, I think you can find suitable shooters, uh, just as good. And then I believe it's just two second rounders or something like that for an all-star level guy. That's pretty good. And I don't think this trade, like, some people were saying, like, oh, this trade really hurts uh, Phoenix's depth. They already had depth was, problems. Yeah, their depth was already bad. <laughs> for, for me, like, that was their problem. They gave away a lot of their depth already when they got Kevin Durant. They gave up Cam Johnson and, you know, stuff like that. So, to me, that's kind of where they first started it. 
So this trade, I don't think, makes their depth really all that much worse because it's already not good. They're going to have to find those cheap mid-level guys that want to just come play and hope for a championship, and they're going to have to do it like the LeBron way. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna need 3 and D guys, basically, to come and play for this team, um, which I assume they'll probably find some. And maybe they find one in the draft or something like that. I don't know where they're even picking, to be honest. Um, or if they even have any draft picks uh, after all the, the, the trading and stuff that they've done. But I will say Ishbia has gone in there and just unloaded. He is treating it like it's a 2K simulation at times. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's just trying to make a statement mm -hmm. and say, look at what I can do. Or if he's actually trying to win a championship. Yeah. Because this this move, in a like in a simple view, looks like they're trying to win a championship, but like we said, the team has to be right. Yeah, all the pieces have to fit. The coach has to be. Everything has to come together. Yeah, for a championship team to happen. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just trade for Bradley Beal. Yeah, that's cool. All star player. Got us average thirty before. Can shoot the ball. They need help. Yeah, a lot I, more help. And I wonder if this will send Bradley Beal back to more of what you're talking about like maybe he's a more of a catch and shoot guy now on this team yes he can still create but like he doesn't have to because you have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant um I'm, I'm curious how it's gonna work out I do like Devin Booker kind of going to the point guard role because we saw him in it last year and I think I think he plays it pretty well um being a point guard that can not only distribute pretty decently um but also be able to kind of create his own shot and sort of make mismatches at the point guard position. Um, so I kind of like that move for them. But yeah, I, I'm I'm in agreement. It's it's, it's going to be weird. They they have to figure out a lot. But I think it's I think it's a step in the right direction. To be honest, a lot of people have been kind of down on this trade, but I think overall I like it. For the yeah, I, I'm not positive because I I feel like we have gone overboard being positive with like players just bidding being teamed up randomly mm -hmm. and going oh this is how they win a championship and then it never works we've been too we've been we've been just positive on those moves too many times so i'm not like completely swinging to the negative side yeah but i'm just like cool you have an all-star player now what are you going to do about the rest of your team mm -hmm. now there's rumors they might go for draymond yeah who's officially an unrestricted free agent. Mm -hmm. And that would help a lot. Right. A guy that can take a lot of pressure off them in terms of ball handling and defense. Yeah. And overall, just like team morale, as long as he's not doing extra stupid stuff, like with the Jordan Poole thing. But the problem is, Draymond Green, the reason he even opted out is because he wants more money. The Suns don't have money. They are True. deep in the negative. So, But if he wants more rings... Yeah, I mean he can't, he can't chase crazy money now yeah. and expect to still win. Like the only reason people, some people say he's a Hall of Fame player, mm -hmm. is because he's a winner. Yeah, everything he's done has been to win. Mm -hmm. And chasing the bag, I don't know if man, I don't know the the Lakers giving him money would be crazy. Yeah, just, like just stick to what you are, Draymond. So let's like let's let's flow right into that then. Draymond Green has opted out, like we just kind of said. There's some expectation that he just the Warriors want him back. He'll sign a bigger deal or something one year maybe. Who knows? Um, and they'll just run it back. But then there's other chances that, you know, the Pistons are always in the rumor mill uh, for Draymond Green signing. I would have liked him five years ago. Yeah. He, there there was really a – there was a time, I think, I think after their second championship, where I said I would want Draymond Green on this team. Yeah. But that was a while ago. Yeah. And I, I don't want to pay him. I would I would love him for like a veteran presence on the team, obviously. But as far as like paying him top dollar to just do what he does, I I don't want that for this team. And to be fair, like he could either be a really good leader or he could just be annoyed that he's playing with all these young guys. I don't know. Um, so I think Draymond Green most likely just goes back to Golden State unless somebody decides to throw some crazy offer. Um, and I guess I, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know who has money, I guess that's, that's the biggest problem. I don't know who has money to me, this version of Draymond at this point of his career, 
I'm not giving him anything more than anything close to 100 million. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying him 100. It will be hard for me to give him 80. Yeah. I don't I don't know if he's looking for a long-term contract or not either. That's that's the other thing. Maybe 80 at the most. Mhm. Just out of like where the money in the NBA is today and just the yeah, somewhat respect for Draymond. Yeah. Cuz going below 80 would pr- he, he'd probably just flip you off and so just leave. 80 would probably be a 3-year deal. Yeah, like 3 years 80. It'd probably be 3 years 80. Which I think is more than he's making right now. I believe. Listen, three years sixty is what I'd really like him at. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's looking. That's for, more than enough for Draymond because I think his base salary is somewhere in the twenty-five million or something right now. Uh, so for him to opt out, looks like he wants a little bit more. So we'll see. Um, actually, before we get into these other ones, I wanted to bring up our good buddy Chris Pappas sent us a uh, a tweet from Shams. I don't know if you saw it. Um, but apparently the Wizards, Celtics, and Clippers are in strong talks on a trade that would send Kristaps Porzingis to Boston, Marcus Morris, and some draft compensation to Washington, and then Malcolm Brogdon to the Clippers. They're still working out some deal, uh, some details, plus Porzingis has his $36 million uh, player option. How do you feel about Kristaps Porzingis in Boston? If this, you know, fully goes I actually through. like it a lot. Where would he slide in? Like, do they bring back Al Horford? Do they still start Robert Williams? That's the part that kind of is confusing to me. I, I because think, he would kind of fill the Al Horford role. Yeah, like I, a younger version that can give you almost twenty when you need it. Yeah, I, I don't know what Al For, Al Horford's uh, contract is off the, top, off the top of my head. I don't think he's a free agent. Um, and I would think they could just use him as an off the bench role at this point. Like they kind of already do, like skew his minutes a little bit. Um, I think the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the the crazy part about Kristaps Porzingis is that he just came off his best career year, and I think no one knows. Yeah, he was fully he was almost fully healthy the entire year. Yeah, averaged almost 23 a game on good shooting splits. Mm-hmm. But he was in Washington, so yeah, nobody cared. Nobody knew. I'm yeah. sure some people still figure he was hurt most of the year. Mm-hmm. He played almost like 70-something games. Yeah. And, man, if you have Kristaps Porzingis and Robert Williams man in the paint, that is, that's pretty strong yeah. defensive that's uh, legit. front court. So, yeah, I think it's a good move as well. Um, seems kind of bad for the other teams, to be Giving to be up Malcolm Brogdon, losing him as a sixth man is kind of tough, though. Yeah. That's putting more on Derek White. Right. Um, Brogdon to the Clippers. I mean, that helps them in the point guard role. He would be probably their starting point yeah, guard at that point. that would point. help them. Um, and then I guess w- the Wizards are mostly just trying to offload Kristaps Porzingis, um, even though he most likely is going to be a free agent anyway, but it's an easier way to get his contract offloaded. Um, I think Washington has had both of the Morris twins before. So it would be yeah, kind of funny to see them. Yeah. They had Markeith. I'm pretty sure Marcus had a stop there. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, that, that would be probably pretty good. I don't like Kristaps in Boston because it's Boston, but it's a good fit. Um, so, yeah, that, that would yeah. be a really good You slide him in at the four. That would, that would yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Really hoping for some more draft night trades um, or pre-draft trades. I love when trades happen around the draft. So I'm hoping for more and more. The other one that I forgot to mention, too, Damian Lillard. Do you think Damian Lillard's actually going to get traded? Or is this like another smoke show? I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. I I just saw a tweet actually like 10 minutes ago that said Portland isn't taking any more calls on Dame trades. So unless they've like found the, the deal already mm-hmm. and it's in the works, which that could be possible also, they stopped taking calls because they found the deal. Yeah, but it all, it also could be they stopped taking calls because they don't want to listen. Yeah, they just want to keep Dame, and mm-hmm. they got scared. Maybe they got scared of the yeah the scenario. Right. Uh, his only rumor so far has been the Heat. Really, that because the Heat kind of lost out on Bradley Beal, although it it sounded like the Heat backed out of Bradley Beal pretty early in talks, um, that they might look at Damian Lillard, which would be really interesting. 
but it would definitely Portland's in a a really tough spot at this point because their retooling that we said was going to fail has definitely failed. Um, they keep trying to say they're going to keep trying to do it. Like that's why they're they're trying to trade out a three tomorrow. I don't know how you call it retooling when your best players are like twenty one and twenty two. Yeah, I don't know how that's that's rebuilding. Mm-hmm. Like Anthony Simons and Shaden Sharp. Yeah. are your focal points. <laughs> right. And you can't act like they're not. Mm-hmm. That's Total why that retool is like, hilarious. They should just stay at three tomorrow and take Scoot and Brandon Miller, and that, like, rounds out that core. Then you could trade Damian Lillard for more compensation, and you have a really, really strong rebuild going. Yes. So, I don't know. It, it's wild. But I, I get it from, like, a... I guess more more so the business side of wanting to keep Damian Lillard because if you get rid of Damian Lillard, Portland he's the, he's the face. He is Portland, right? Portland will go to Anthony Simons as your face. Like that would take a while. To, I, I, if they draft Scoot, I think Scoot becomes the face. Yeah, even though you still have Anthony Simons. Yeah, and Shaden Sharp, Scoot probably becomes like the ambassador. Right. Yeah, that's true. which takes some pressure off of them, mm-hmm. which could help. Portland, Portland is in a rough a rough spot at the yeah. moment. Um, a couple others that we know have opted out already. Montrez Harrell, big whoop. Uh, Kyle Kuzma kind of could be an important one. For, he's going to get paid. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if he's going to go and just play somewhere like he did with the Wizards or if he's going to try to get back to a contending team. I think that's the interesting part. I'm pre- I Well, I don't know how he thinks, but I would assume he would want to win. Yeah. And being a winning situation, he could still help a winning team. Now, he's one as well that the Pistons had been rumored to in previous years. Um, I still wouldn't mind Kyle Kuzma. He fits in that. Sliding him in at the, at the starting four, I wouldn't mind. It. Like, he slides I in. I would not mind it. Like, you put him at the three or the four, it fits. Yeah, bring good. Wiseman off the bench, start Duran. Yeah. Kuzma at the four. That sounds good to me. You got Bojan. Th- those are those shooters that I'm talking about. So, like, um, yeah, I'd be fine with that. I kind of like it. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. And I, he may take a little bit of a discount coming home. Right. Yeah, there's always that possibility, too. Yeah. Um, Bruce Brown also <laughs> opts out. I'm sure it's a good business move for him after, you know, he had a pretty good finals performance um, that maybe he's going to look to get some more money. I, I hope he stays in Denver. I really do. Yeah. It's it's kind of a good fit. It's a nice rotation piece for them, and he's not gonna be he's not gonna be anything more than he is. I think. I think we know who Bruce Brown is now, but he's very valuable for yeah. for a lot of teams. He's the, like the perfect example of what a tweener can give you in today's game. Because mm-hmm. Brooklyn played him at the four, basically. Yeah. And Denver, they just they put him out there, and he does everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, it'll be cool. I have a bad feeling Houston is going to throw him like a four-year, one twenty deal, and he's just going to end up in that mess to add to their with Ime Udoka guards and stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I have a bad feeling. They just have, go back to Denver, man. They have a weird mash of players. Yes, they do. Um, another little tiny little trade that happened as well yesterday, uh, or was it this morning? It was this morning, right? The Nuggets um have traded for picks twenty nine and thirty two from the Pacers. And I thought the Pacers traded for those picks. The Nuggets traded for those picks? Yes. Okay. As as long as I remember correctly, that's why I thought it was interesting. Yeah. The Nuggets trade 2024 first round pick and the 40th pick to the Pacers for number 29 and oh, 32. okay. So the Nuggets are going to be picking at 29 and 32, which, like I said, I like some of those players around that area. And then the Pacers are going to get a 2024 first and 40th overall. I don't know. I feel like the Pacers kind of got fleeced, but I, that's just me. It's kind of weird because I don't think the 20, like you're banking on the Nuggets being worse than 29 or 32 next year. I don't know. It's just weird, but good for the Nuggets, I think. Um, so we'll see where that plays out. Uh, now we'll get into the actual draft talk. Um, we're going to do a little mock draft. Um, what did we say? You're going to have. The odds, I'm going to have the evens. Um, we'll go through. We can kind of talk in depth on a lot of the the lottery guys. 
maybe we'll keep going if we have a couple more picks that we want to get through. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about what we want from the Pistons, um, things like that, other moves, just everything. But we're going to start with the actual mock draft. So, Malik, you are the Spurs, and you're on the clock. <laughs> You've been mulling this for weeks. Listen. You're, uh, you're just stressed out over who in the world do we take at number one. It's it, you know it's the most stressful position that you've been in in years. Uh, where do you go? I, I'm feeling so generous today, Joey. I want us both to pick this number one because I, I feel like we're, we're at the same wavelength. I feel like we're thinking the same thing about this number one pick, which is rare. Mm-hmm. We might be the only two people making this pick at one. Yeah, <laughs> It's just us on this island. Mm-hmm. It's this French kid. Right. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mm-mm. I mean, uh, I mean, we've had Frank Nilakina, we've had Killian Hayes. It's hard to trust French prospects. Yeah. This kid, he, we don't know. But I think us two, we're, we're, we're seeing eye to eye on this first pick. Are we seeing it? Yeah. Do you I see think the vision? So. I think so. Let's go ahead and pick him. All right. With the first pick in the 2023 NBA draft. Bilal Koulibaly. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Spurs select Victor Wimbanyama. Yep. The most hyped prospect since LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Some people say he's the greatest prospect ever. Yeah. I mean, what do you say about him at this point? The the They brought him over to the U.S. for the showcase mm-hmm. him versus Scoot Henderson. And almost the entire game, my jaw was just dropped. Yeah. I, I was just shocked about how good this kid is at his size, almost 7'4". Handles like a guard, shoots like a guard, has post moves like a polished NBA player. It, there's there's almost nothing he can't do. Yeah. On either end of on either end of the floor. Mm-hmm. He's he's avoid injuries. He's avoided injuries to this point. He can move. I, San Antonio has another <laughs> potential Hall of Fame player. Yeah. Is that unfair? It that you get like David it, Robinson it feels, and then a decade later, Tim Duncan, and then like 15 years later, like this, it's, it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. It definitely like feels one, one of the smallest markets in the NBA, mm-hmm. and they just keep getting them. Yeah. Seems kind of rigged. <laughs> it does. Now, I will say in the last couple – I would say the last couple of days, I've kind of like fallen back on the hype just a little bit because like we just saw Chet last year and I'm not like trying to compare the two necessarily, but they're similar builds, um, things like that. So- Chet, Chet was even more alarming because like it was clear when you looked at him yeah, that it was, it's going to be hard for him to put on some real muscle mass mm-hmm. and he's just so skinny. Yeah, and the nice thing is that apparently Victor is really into his health and stuff, so he's like yeah. really dedicated. For you that. watch videos of him and his like his trainer; they do really like, I wouldn't say out there, but like unique training yeah. exercises to like keep his right. keep him strong. And as good as Chet is off the dribble, Victor is even crazier. Yeah. And the thing that I really like to hear today, um, I was listening to some of the ESPN draft talk. And uh, Jay Billis brought up if Ralph Sampson played in today's game. That's what I've said. He yeah. probably would adjust <laughs> to his game similar to Victor Wembanyama, which is really cool because not many people know Ralph Sampson. I obviously am too young to know Ralph Sampson, but my dad talks about Ralph Sampson and kind of like how he was completely different in that day and age back in the 80s and stuff. And that, you know, if he didn't get injured, he could have been something crazy yeah. for the young people that don't know he was a 7-4 athlete in the 80s yeah he was something yeah people had never seen somebody that tall that could run like a small forward right and like yeah actually get up off the floor yeah and yeah victor can do that and he has real basketball skill mm-hmm. and i hope that he can stay healthy and we can we can see him play because it's going to be really interesting to see how he matches up against NBA level bigs. Yeah, Pete, I feel like people are already going to put the Spurs in playoff contention. Mm-hmm. Their roster is still so young. Yeah, and like they they don't have any borderline All Star guys on their roster mm-hmm. besides potentially Victor. 
They have a good, a bunch of good role players. Yeah. And I like a lot of their guys. You know, I've been a Keldon Johnson fan for a while. Mm-hmm. I like many of their guys. Devin Vassell is. Yeah, Devin Vassell has made a lot of progress. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they're kind of on the cusp, but I, I also would like. Should they trade for a veteran? At least one. Mm. Like, what if they became the third team that got Chris Paul? I don't know if they're ready for it yet, though. I, I think that's part of it. Uh, for me, I think they just need to keep developing. Like, their staff is full of veterans. We talked about it before. Like, they got Boris Diaw on their staff. Tony Parker's definitely going to be there now. Every year, every overseas player that's ever been there mm-hmm. will come in to help mentor Victor. Every right. single one of them. And I also just want to, like, I don't think the Spurs are immediately going to jump into playoff contention with, me with Victor. I think he's going to still take a bit to adjust. I, I think he'll figure it out, but I don't think he's going to dominate right away as much as people think. That's I think what, I think he's more likely to dominate on the defensive side of the ball than he is on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, that's what I, my CP3 thought honestly wasn't more of like getting them to the playoffs, like a high-level mentor right. on the court that can like help everybody rise their game. Like what he did with OKC and Shea Gilgis-Alexander's playoff, I mean, first year with OKC. Which they did end up make like surprising people and making the playoffs, but yeah, just a just a, a coach on the floor, yeah, that can get everybody in the right place and improve that young core game by game and make sure they're always playing at a level that people would expect of the Spurs. Yeah, I think the other problem with that though too is then that's basically Chris Paul throwing in the towel, saying that he he's I don't gonna know if that'll be the throwing in the towel. I'm saying like he would not like he'd be basically saying he's not going to win a chip in his career. Cuz like yes. this is I like mean, he is on the cusp of his last Like contract. where does he go at this is the Clippers like the only option? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is going like, to the Lakers going to going to really help his career? <laughs> I mean, maybe he sneaks uh, one out. People are going to say it's LeBron's ring. Nobody's going to care if he well, yeah. wanted. it. But if if he's kind of the like you know, they lost this year. He comes in next year, and they get over the hump. I mean, we would appreciate it. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. So, I it depends on if he would be willing to do something like that. I just don't – I don't see it necessarily. Now, this would be a cool one for – well, would it be? I was thinking this would be kind of a funny one to see Draymond Green go to the Spurs. That's, that would be funny. To see – like, he honestly would have been a perfect fit for the Spurs in the 2000s. Yeah. He would have been perfect. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Victor is going to be exciting. Please just – he says he's going to play in summer league and all that stuff. and He said he's only going to play a little bit. Yeah. It, yeah. it still makes you nervous. They're, 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 they're still in the playoffs. I like that guys are playing. I love that Chet tried to play last year and played, you know, in some other stuff. Unfortunately, he got hurt, and that's always the risk, and people are going to say, oh, should have never played. Yeah. But I like when they're, you know, you get to see them more often um, getting into more real game speed and stuff like that. All righty. I'm on to the second pick. The Michael Jordan list Charlotte Hornets. It's a new era. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yep. It Michael Jordan has sold as majority owner of the Hornets. There's still no say on who is actually going to be the owner yet, right? No. Yeah, it's just in limbo so. at the moment. Um, so the Hornets have a lot of decisions to make. Uh, obviously, I mean, you get the you, the next two best guys, Scoot Henderson and Brandon Miller. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth. Scoot Henderson would be really cool to have with LaMelo. They would be a pretty good backcourt. Um, Scoot could be one, like, Scoot realistically could be rookie of the year. Uh, I don't think people are giving him enough credit for that. Um and then Brandon Miller on the other side kind of also fits a position of need. Gordon Hayward's another year older. He can't stay on the floor all the time. Yeah. Kelly Oubre, I think, is still a guy that's better off the bench than being a straight-up starter. And he just adds more shooting, which, you know, when you're a team that's just struggling, you, I, I think shooting can always help. Um, so if I'm the Hornets, I, unfortunately... Unfortunately? Sounds like you don't have confidence Although, in this pick, Joey. Well, I say unfortunately because I, I, well, I guess it's kind of, it's kind of changed in the last couple of days. 
A I'm, lot of people are going back and forth with it. So. Yeah, I, I'm going with Brandon Miller. Okay. I just think it's a. I, I don't want to say less risk per se, because I feel like that's the wrong term. But for lack of better terms, less risk. Um, because if I th- I think as good as Scoot and Lamelo together could be, it's kind of boom or bust. Yeah, and and Scoot is gonna probably take some time to figure out his shot. Because that's his biggest downfall is he's just not a great shooter. Um, there was like some crazy stat of like seventy or eighty percent of his um, scoring came off the dribble or something like that. Um, he's not much of a spot up guy. Goes to the basket with full force, which is really great, fun yeah. to watch. There's a lot of pe- people call him Baby D Rose for a reason. Mm-hmm. He he thrives yeah. doing everything off the dribble and using his athleticism. Yeah, but also like because Lamelo is kind of the main point guard for that team. He also doesn't, like, take a ton of spot-up shots either. So I feel like it would, as good as it could be at its ceiling, I think their pairing also is a little awkward at times. And so I think I would rather have Brandon Miller as just kind of a, not just a spot-up guy, but a spot-up guy, but you can, LaMelo can drive, kick it, then Brandon can maybe drive. And I think it just opens up the spacing a little bit better. Yeah, Brandon Miller also showed he has the potential to be a high-level creator himself, yeah, right. making passes. So I, I think if I'm the Hornets, I'm going to go with the, like I said, for lack of better terms, safer option of Brandon Miller. That's who I would take. So this makes things interesting. This makes things very interesting for the Portland Trailblazers at three. Mm-hmm. A lot of people probably calling the phones. Definitely. And if if we involved trades, there would be a move made mm-hmm. for Dame Lillard, probably to Miami. And I'm going to want back at least three players mm-hmm. plus some picks. Whether it's Max Struess. I'm going to say Tyler Hero at first, and they're probably going to say no. I want Max Struess. I probably want... um. Cody Martin, and I might also want Duncan Robinson, even though his he has a good amount of money with him still. Wait, don't he have Caleb? It, well, is it Caleb Martin? I think they have Caleb. Okay, Caleb. Maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> that's what I, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll look. It up. I, I get them mixed up. One yeah, I, I forget. Yeah, I'm gonna want Max Struess, one of the Martins, and probably one other player, plus a few picks. In exchange, you get Dame Lillard, and I'm drafting. Yeah, they have Caleb. Okay, Caleb. Yeah. But all that being said, I'm drafting Scoot Henderson yeah. with the number three pick, and I'm getting back some quality veteran role players mm-hmm. that still have some youth in their like late 20s. Yeah. And from this point, you got Scoot Henderson, who becomes the face of the franchise. Mm-hmm. You got Anthony Simons as a high-level combo guard, kind of small uh, as a fur two guard, but in today's NBA, I don't think it's a major problem. You got Shaden Sharp at the three, who's just an insane athlete Mm -hmm. and showed with more playing time that he has the ability to score if you give him the ball. Their big situation is still kind of muddled. Like, a healthy use of Nurkic is a very good center, Mm -hmm. but he's been hurt for like the past two, three years, so it's tough. But like I said, in exchange, you probably get Max Struess. You might get Caleb Martin. And who 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 knows what else you could get from the from the Miami Heat? Yeah, in that situation. So yeah, I'm taking Scoot, and I'm not looking back. Mm-hmm. And I'm going ahead with my my mix of very young players and younger veteran players. Yeah, that I got from the Miami Heat and some of the guys that I still have. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna be a new, young, exciting team in Portland. Anthony Simons and Scoot Henderson are going to play so fast. They're going to be running up and down, mm-hmm. dropping dimes, hitting guys for open threes. They are also crazy athletic. Yes. Scoot Stupid. Henderson, Anthony Simons, and Shaden Sharp. Listen, Anthony Simons put on a decent performance in the dunk contest. Mm-hmm. Scoot Henderson, crazy athletic. Like I said, Shaden Sharp bounce off out the gym. It's going to be very exciting for those fans to come see those Portland Trailblazers. How much will they win? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Right. But it's going to be fun, and the future looks bright in Portland. 
Yeah. Scoot Henderson at three. And now I'm the Houston Rockets at four, and I'm crying. <laughs> Listen, you got Ame and Jalen Green. What more could you want? What more could you want? I, a lot. <laughs> uh, you got Jabari. You look at their depth chart. It is something strange. It's a mess. At, the, le- at least Jabari showed some of the promise that he has later in the season. And this is where I get nervous. Like, they are the true, like, tweener team. Yeah. They have so many guys that are, like. A lot of guys that probably won't be there by the end of the season. <laughs> like, Kevin Porter Jr. has shown flashes. He's probably going to get traded at some point. That's my guess. I feel like Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, and Shin Goon are the keepers. Yeah. Them three. Mm-hmm. They got guys like Josh Christopher and Jay Sean Tate. We've seen like all these guys show flashes. You still don't, is Ty Ty Washington going to play? I don't know. <laughs> uh, he was hurt a little bit, so yeah. This team is literally. KJ Martin, a, he's shown good a stuff. A huge mess. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, and this is really unfortunately, because I think they have to go with the best available here, which means they have to get rid of all their other guards that they've gotten the last so many years. And I just well, this if you're going where I think this kid could play the three, right? I, I mean, he has the size to play the yeah, three. Yeah, true. And I'll obviously spoil it by yeah. saying the twins have they can play multiple positions, yeah. but they're kind of primarily guards. And everybody kind of says that a man is just a little bit better. Yeah, his, his athleticism is like Vince Carter esque. Yeah, like watching him is something insane. But Asar kind of has a little bit better game. Right. He's a slightly better shooter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a – what I, What do you want? I've heard it said that, like, Amen is probably, like, slightly higher ceiling, but Asar has, like, the full toolkit in his game already. Yeah. Um, So I would go with Amen. I think he's just just a little bit better for what they need, I guess. Um, They they, meet, they need more ceiling, to be honest. Um. And that's really all I have to say because I, I think Houston is in a surefire dumpster right now. They are they are going to have to dig their way out for a while. Hey, if you, if you get James Harden back in Houston, oh gosh, that might be even more of a mess. I don't know what they're getting. Ma Udoka as a plus, yeah. but with this roster, it's a you don't know. Mm-hmm. But it is good to have Green, Shingun, and Jabari Smith. Yeah, which could be short things if mm-hmm. they keep improving. So now you're on the Pistons clock. I'm on the clock. Yeah. I am on the clock. There have been so many names brought up for this pick. So many different ways to go. Yep. Even you, as of this morning, ESPN changed who they were had been talking yeah. about. I, I've seen at least five different names. The Thompson twins have been brought up. Mm-hmm. I'm in and I saw the, the, the pick that a lot of Pistons fans have come together on, Cam Whitmore from Villanova. Mm-hmm. I've seen some Jarris Walker. Yep. That's what ESPN was projecting today. Probably the most physically ready NBA prospect in this draft. Yeah. 6'8", 235. A little bit raw game on offense, but a good shooter and a lot of stuff to build on. Listen. It's not an easy pick. It's not really an easy pick. No, it's not. Ultimately, I want them to trade out of this pick. Yeah, there there are some people that want them to trade up, possibly trade back. Also, Taylor Hendricks has been brought up. Yeah. The UCF young guy, 6'9", came out of nowhere for UCF as a true freshman. Mm -hmm. A ton of skill at his size, can shoot, can do a bunch of stuff, but still has to get better as an overall player. Because we're not really doing any trade-ups or trade-backs for this one, I'm going to stick with the consensus the guy that a lot most Pistons fans have rallied together on, the guy that I like more than anybody in this spot. He has a nice jumper to build off of. He shot a good percentage for Villanova. He's very athletic, really good off the dribble, shows effort on defense. He is a good building block, a guy that not only can shoot but can give you several other things. Cam Whitmore out of Villanova. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like if you pick him at five, there still could be moves to be made. Yeah. But if you take Cam Whitmore, I feel like Pistons fans would be not super excited. Well, some people would be super excited because they've, they've watched him more and seen how talented he is. Mm-hmm. But Pistons fans would be somewhat content with this. 
Yeah. Sitting at sitting at the fifth pick, knowing the level of talent they're getting at five. Mm-hmm. And if you want to, if you were considering trading Bogdanovich, you could slide him in at the three and just continue with that young core. Yeah. And start him at the three. Mm-hmm. But you could also bring him off the bench if you still have Bogey. Right. And let him ease into the position he'll eventually come into. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm I'm taking Cam Whitmore at five. Yeah. For the Pistons. I think I want the Pistons to take a SAR. Um, he, or, do, he does have some more upside. Yeah. But I think from the jump, Cam Whitmore gives you yeah. I, I think some. Yeah. I've become okay with either one of those. I did not like the Jerry Walker uh, projection this morning. I like him as a player. I don't like him for the fit. He feels very similar to another beef stew. And I just he, don't. he's slightly more talented on offense. Yeah. And more athletic, but yeah. I'm just kind of tired. He, he's a big effort guy and yeah, plays hard on defense. See, and I'm tired of the Pistons filling their power forward position with effort with guys. With that kind of guy. Yeah. Um so personally, as much as I like him as a player, I wouldn't want him for the Pistons. Yeah, Taylor Hendricks would be the upside pick for four because yeah. he gives you a lot of offense. Yep. And now at six, I think the Magic have a really easy pick, in my opinion. I think they just go up and they take a SAR. Um, he, sl- he can slot right into the shooting guard for them. Um, they can pick whatever point guard is working best for them. Coyle Anthony. Yeah. Honestly, Jaylen Franz Subs. Wagner has been like their main like ball yeah. handler and decision maker. Right. And he was last season. And he's just a forward. So now you kind of run that. Like Whoever wants to take the ball up the floor can do that. Yeah. Markel Fultz did really well last year when yeah. he was healthy. Um, and I think Asar Thompson just gives them a little bit a little bit more height because a lot of their guards are little. Uh, that's probably why they had Mo uh, take the ball up a lot. Yeah. Next to Paolo, he's probably the best athlete in the starting five if you start him. Yeah. So I would just go Asar right there and call it a day, to be honest. You are back up with the Pacers pick now. The Pacers pick. You got Tyrese Halliburton. You got an all-star point guard. Mm-hmm. Last year, you took um. Oh my gosh, two guard out of Arizona, the rookie. I don't. Know. A lot of people thought he was rookie of the year for like the first half of the season. Oh, Ben Matherin. Yes, Jesus. You took Ben Matherin last year. Oof. He set at year two, basically. Yeah. You still have Myers Turner, Miles Turner. I don't know what they're doing with him. Mm-hmm. Aaron Neesmith is a solid piece that they picked up. Uh, they they have some good young pieces. Yeah, but in that forward area, there they still have could fill in some slots. They got Jalen Smith as well. Yeah, they they got Jalen Smith, a good four slash five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they also have Isaiah uh, Jackson. Yep. Yeah, they they'll eventually. I think they're gonna trade Miles Turner, but they just keep holding on to him. Mm-hmm. Like they've got young bigs that they could use. Yep. So they've got the bigs. They've got some guards. When you look at the forwards on the board, Jarris is there. Who, honestly, I feel like Jalen Smith kind of already gives you what Jarris Walker would give you. Right. And just a little bit longer. Yeah. Um. Taylor Hendricks is interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm trying I'm, to think. Do you go with like a higher upside pick here? Right. I mean, you could. A guy like Derek Lively has been kind of shooting up boards. If you're thinking about trading Miles Turner, um, yeah, this this is where the draft gets tough. Yeah, they could get better. They could get better on defense. They could add a shooter. This is a tough one. Here's who I'm going to go with. With the seventh pick, this is a bit of a reach. Okay, but I feel like this guy gives you. A high, high level role player that you need mm-hmm. for a playoff team and a team that wins. I'm going Case and Wallace from Kentucky. Wow. Okay. I think he has a ton of upside as a shooter, mm-hmm. a catch and shoot guy. When he got hot last season, he barely missed. But there are also some times where he kind of fell off. But as a freshman, he was honestly he might have been the best defender in the country as a as a guard. Yeah, or at least he was top. He was in the top three. Mm-hmm. Like he is high intensity, high effort. He 
He doesn't need to take the ball off the dribble to get points. Yeah. He's going to rebound, and he hits open shots. Like, I at the seven spot, I don't think any of the other guys listed have, like, superstar upside mm-hmm. to where you just need to take them. Yeah. So if you get Kaysen Wallace at the seventh pick, I think you are definitely getting a guy that gives you high-level defense when he comes in and eventually shoots high 30s from three. Mm-hmm. Now, I like he. I don't know if it's like Jay Crowder, whatever comp you have for like a really good 3 and D guy yeah. that can play for a long time. I think that's what Kaysen Wallace is. Mm. And that's an important piece for a winning team, and I think that helps the Pacers a lot. Yeah. So I'm going Kaysen Wallace at seven. Okay. All right, and now the Wizards are up. Now they're kind of oddball This team. You want to talk about a team in the dumps. Yeah. Like, Houston at least has young, fun players. Mm-hmm. What does Washington have? Like, in, in, in a short summary, what does Washington have? They're going to need Denny, Denny Advia uh, to, like, actually become that guy. They got Denny, who showed little signs last year. Mm-hmm. They got... The the guard from Wisconsin from last year. Johnny we, Davis. We both were down on Johnny Davis. Yeah. In the last month, he actually had a few good games, but still, I'm just not a fan of Johnny Davis. Yep. They got Corey Kispert. They're most likely going to lose Kyle Kuzma. So, in this scenario, they they got to go, like, kind of best available. Um, To me, that's either Jairus Walker or, for me, it would be Grady Dick just because – he could become a scorer for that team. Um, and personally, I think I would go Grady Dick, just because I don't, I, I don't really like their guards, and I think, like as much as I don't really like their their front court either, like Daniel Gafford has shown like some signs. He's, yeah, he's he's a good like, on a winning team, he's a quality backup. Yeah. A yeah. And then I believe they have Isaiah Todd, who's Do they do they sorry. trade him or is he still there? I don't know for <laughs> sure, but I think he's still there. I think he was included in, in the Phoenix package. He might have been. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you might be right. You might be right. So maybe Jairus Walker isn't terrible. I'm just gonna stick with Grady Dick. It's fine. Listen, I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame you. So I, I think at it's this kind point, of, it's it's a sigh. From Washington fans, yeah. but what player is not a sigh for Washington fans? Right. Well, and they're going to need one of the better scorers, and I, I don't think Jairus Walker yeah. is going to be that like, guy. I honestly think they could take a reach like Anthony Black from Arkansas. I just, he's just not a shooter though. Like he struggled he from three. So like, but you all, you need a point guard to Washington needs so much. Well then, Washington I, like, needs so much. I would rather them take Jalen Hood Shafino then, at that point, if that's where they wanted to go. Are you you're sticking with Grady Dick, though? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll stick with Grady Dick. Because I, I think you have to maybe bite the bullet and just hope that Johnny Davis can figure something out maybe for a year. You have to. Yeah. yeah. You, you still got to stick with his development. So, yeah. Now you got the Jazz. A it's going to be weird, though, with him and Kispert. Like, who do you play? <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a weird one. Well, you could maybe slide Denny down to the four. Run Kispert and Grady. True. That is true. So yeah, you might figure yeah. something out. The Jazz are at nine, and we have to go super fast because we <laughs> I can't believe we ran out of time already. Jazz at nine. So we okay. can just kind of talk about it. You got Lori Markinen. You somehow figured out how to have a good, fun, young core mm-hmm. and an up-and-coming coach. Yeah. Congratulations, Utah. Danny Ainge is still a magician. You did it. So when you look at on you look at on the what's on the board. What can you add? You could add Anthony Black. Playmaker, good defense, offensive upside. You could go Jarris Walker, kind of play behind Larry Markinen. I don't know about that. <laughs> I am going to go Anthony Black. Okay. Yeah. Just just go with the guard. Yep. Get you got you. Walker Kessler. You got Markinen. Yeah. You got some fun young players. Anthony Black could be a foundational piece. Yeah. Get some defense going. Yeah. Um, Dallas with the tenth pick. I think they're they're easy. You go Derek Lively. They have no big guys. Dwight Powell's been on this team forever, and he's just – he's okay. He's a good role player. Um, but you need a big guy to man the front court, and I think Derek Lively has the upside to do so. 
Magic are back on the clock at 11. Orlando picks again at 11. You know who I'm going with? Who are you? I'm going to go. I'm going Jordan Hawkins. I like Jordan Hawkins a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, They have so many dudes that play make, so many dudes that need the ball in their hands, and athletes. Just get a shooter. Yeah. Just a dude that's just going to run around, get open, and let it fly. Yeah. They don't have many of those guys, so let's get one of those guys in there. Yeah. Jordan Hawkins. Yeah, if the Magic ended up in the draft getting a Sar Thompson and Jordan Hawkins, I think that'd be pretty good. Pretty good. Um, who do we have at 12? Oklahoma OKC. City. Wow. They've been doing a lot of moving around and things like that. Hmm. Where can they go? I think they kind of can they can take a reach. Not like a huge reach or anything, but just like take a chance. Mm, who do I go with though? I think I'm going with Jet. Yeah. Wow. I, I Jet's just, OKC. I just think I was thinking Keontae George or Jet Howard. I think they can that just is interesting. I, I think I would have taken Jordan Hawkins. Um, just for another shooter. But I think they have the chance to be able to take a swing here um, because of how good their development has been lately. Um, that maybe you can you can get something out of these guys. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Jet for a little shakeup because there's a lot of point guards and stuff, and Jet's more of a 2-3 that they need. So, yeah. I was probably going to take Jet with my Toronto pick. <laughs> you took that one. Nice. Good pick. 13. I'm going Jalen Hood Shafino. Hmm. Fred Van Vliet is most likely out the door. Yep. Scotty Barnes is a point forward, but you also need like a real point guard also. Yeah. Bring in Jalen Hood Shafino. He can play make. He can hit some shots. He's an overall good young player. He can develop with that young core in Toronto. Yeah. And then we have the Pelicans rounding out the lottery. Your Pelicans. Gosh. <laughs> they are the controversial game. Pelicans. They're about to be in trouble again. Yeah. Um. What do they even do? They got they got a lot of they're gonna have a lot of problems to be honest. Um, I think well I guess if if they're maybe moving on from Zion, we didn't we didn't take Taylor Hendricks right. I'm not nope slipping. Take Taylor Hendricks, take a swing, basically fill that power forward position. Um, Brandon Ingram can still play the three. CJ McCollum. They kind of need a point guard, but CJ plays has played a decent amount of point guard. Um, yeah. Also, what the point guard options there aren't amazing. Yeah, you go with like Nick Smith Jr. I don't, yeah. I don't love Nick Smith is betting on upside. Amari Bailey would be interesting. Yeah, but, but that, that's also kind of a tough one too. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Taylor Hendricks just. Upside kind of guy. Hope for the best. Maybe All recovering right. from <laughs> trading away Zion Williamson. All righty. Um, with like this last minute, do the Pistons make any big move or trade or anything? Uh, like, do you think the Pistons are going to do something? Because there's been a lot of rumors. I think the Pistons are definitely going to make a move. I have no idea what it is going to be. Would you rather them move up or move back? Move up. Okay. I I don't think they just sit on their hands. Even if they make the fifth pick, I don't think they just sit on their hands. I think after that, they probably trade up. Or they might trade their picks for a player. Hmm. But yeah, whether it's move up from five, make the pick and make some moves, I think the Pistons do something Yeah. outside of just making a pick tomorrow. Hmm. On record, do you want the Pistons to have Zion Williamson or no? If they were in the running. Yes, I would like the Pistons to have Zion Williamson. That's all I needed. Me too. Make it happen. Anyway, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We ran right to the top of time. It's lovely. Unfortunately, I won't be here next week. So we're going to have to do our full recap in two weeks. But that will also give us time for free agency stuff to talk to start. So we'll have a lot to talk about then. Um, But for now, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time.
Watching Zion play 40 games a year for the Pistons will be electric. Can't wait. 